we present Do Not Adjust Your Set, the Get Up and Go show. Whenever it comes on, people all over the country, get up and go. Hi there, nice to be with you. I'd like to introduce you to Legs Larry Smith, drums. And Michael Palin, garden rake. <laughs> Come in David Clagg, bass guitar. And Neil Linnis, piano. Hello, Rodney Ruskin Slater on tenor sax. And Roger Ruskin Spear on the alto sax. I'd like to introduce myself on trumpet. It's nothing. I'd like to introduce you now to David Jason on spoons. And Mr. Knees Coffee on tuba. <laughs> the knees that's the nice. Hello, Eric Idle on temple bells. Hi, Eric. Come in, Terry Jones on toast. <laughs> that's kind of groovy, Terry. Oh dear, I'm afraid that's all we have time for, ladies and gentlemen, but many of you have written in asking if we, we play the next one, and this one is especially for you, Mr. I. Smith of Salisbury Road, is you know? And also Mr. M. Bob of Kulu for his son Sabu of Notting Hill Gate Number. The next one we're going to play is Do Not Adjust Your Set. We've got an absolutely great bill for you this week. It's 17 and 11. Goodbye again and welcome. At this time each week for the next few days, we shall be looking at how prominent people cope with the problems of falling over. This week's guest is David Jason. Next week's guest is David Jason. <laughs> and the week after that, we've been lucky enough to get David Jason. <laughs> now, sir, what's your name? Hmm? <laughs> David Jason. Oh, yes, I'm sorry, yes. Now David Jason is going to illustrate how to fall over. Did you enjoy that? I did. <laughs> and now little Dave is going to show us how to fall over again. <laughs> and again. And again. <laughs> and again. <laughs> and again. <laughs> yes, there's all this on more on his latest LP, David Jason Falls at the Royal Albert Hall. <laughs> and again. And again. Now, the subject of cowboys has been on everybody's lips recently. <laughs> And we have with us in the studio tonight a Mr. Arthur Cumming. In fact, the Mr. Arthur Cumming, who has brought along a relic of the old wild and woolly West. Yes, I have. <laughs> Could we see it, please? Certainly, yes, certainly. <laughs> no, I said wild and woolly West. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I thought you said woolly vest. <laughs> Terribly sorry, I thought he said Woolly West. I've never seen a Woolly West. I once met Peter West, mm. but I haven't brought him along to the studio yes. to show you, I'm afraid. Yes, thank you, Mr. Cumming. And now, over to the weather room and Terry Jones. Well, hello again, and weather to the welcome forecast. Well, it's been today all over the country, and this morning, in parts of North Wales and early Scotland. Though worst of the Pennines, there have been patches of yesterday interspersed with the little last year. <laughs> well, the look up this evening is tonight, and tomorrow should be just about the same, but it isn't last week by the time we reach it. <laughs> well, that's this up me under this evening, so for now I'll say pudding, but I'll be out again early off when I'll be blowed with some more twaddle. Happy birthday! <laughs> Come. Not at all, Mrs. Merriweather. Now, what exactly is the trouble, eh? Well, it's little Snowy. Mm -hmm. He's crawled under the sofa there. He won't come out. He won't eat any food. And he's so miserable. I see. Well, it's probably just a chill he's caught or something. Anyway, let's have a look at the little chap, shall yes, we? Yes, he's under here. I come see. along now, Snowy. Come to Mummy. There you are. Don't worry. Nice Mr. Bert and the vet's going to make mm. you all better. Come on. Ah! Oh, 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 you never told me it was a hamster. I thought it was a nice 
nice little doggy. But you're a vet. I know, I know, but they don't like hamsters. They're all small and creepy and they don't say anything. <laughs> and I'm allergic to them. Oh, come along now. See what a lovely no! hamster. No! Oh! 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 Down! 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 <laughs> cuckoo! Cuckoo! I can feel the hamster coming on. Beaky boo! Beaky boo! Boo! Beaky boo! Hello? Dr. Figgis? This is, this is Merriweather here. Beaky Could you come round immediately, please, as quick as you can? I came as quick as I could. He's over here. He's got all funny. Let's have a look at that chap. Oh, you never told me it was a vet. I'm allergic to them. Oh, 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 Good evening. Please post early for Christmas. Because of the difficulties with dealing with the rush, the closing date for posting your cards and letters this year to arrive on time for Christmas is May the 27th. <laughs> now, this may seem like a long time, but don't forget some of our postmen walk very slowly. <laughs> the closing date for your parcels is uh, the day before yesterday. But don't worry about posting your letters and cards to your friends in Japan because they'll arrive in plenty of time for Christmas 1970. <laughs> well, it was five minutes ago anyway. Well, these arrangements have been made so that your Christmas mail will arrive on time and that you and your friends can have a very happy Christmas day on November the 9th. <laughs> hmm? Oh, November the 12th. <laughs> July the 14th, <laughs> August the 5th, I'm fired. No, don't go away, I'll get it right in a minute. 30 days, have September, April, <laughs> September. Hello, Georgie Porchy. Guess who this is? Go on, I'll give you three guesses. No, it's not Mr. Blenkinsop. <laughs> no, it's not Gloria. No, it's not Shirley. Daphne? Who's Daphne? <laughs> Susie's friend. Who's Susie? <laughs> no, it's, it's not Myra. Oh, Petronelle. It's, it's Lucy. Your wife. I just rang to say I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Would you send in Humphreys, please? Oh, dear, I... I do so hate sacking anyone. Yes, I know, I know, but if he's got to go, he's got to go. We'll just have to break it to him gently, that's all. Oh, dear. Oh, come in, old chap, come in. <laughs> Sit down. Sit down, won't you? Oh, I see. No, over there. Well, huh. how did you like it here? I mean, how do you like it here? <laughs> I will say, you know, when you've been to a place for 20 years, you know, you get used to it. 20 years, eh? Oh, I, I, I hadn't realised it was as, as long as oh. um, that. Uh, this is Mr. Withers. Uh, well, I, I'm going to be blunt with you, and I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be bluntly honest. I'm not going to beat about the bush. I'm going to go straight to the point. Straight to the point. And I'm going to be ruthless. <laughs> so over to you, Sir Charles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, yes, well, phew. In those 20 years, you, you've given the firm some wonderful service. Oh, oh, oh yes, sir. Oh, I wouldn't dream of working nowhere else, sir. Wouldn't you? <laughs> no. Uh, not even Robertson's up the road, where they, they've got lots of vacancies and it's on, on your way home. Very nice. Oh, no, no, sir. No, I wouldn't work up there. I mean, besides, after all, I mean, I wouldn't get a job now, would I? Not at my age. Oh, nonsense, old chap. You'd get a job anywhere if you were fired. I mean, if you, um, if you couldn't come, if you couldn't get in, if anything happened to you, if you, if you were ill or had trouble, or, or if you fell out of a window, or over to Mr. Withers. Uh, <laughs> look, old man, I mean, can you imagine why we asked you here? No, sir, no, I haven't got any idea. Oh, how awful. <laughs> look, suppose I was to tell you the firm hadn't been doing too well recently, what would your reaction be? Well, I reckon I'd have to work hard in it, sir, wouldn't I? <laughs> oh, dear. Look, what does Santa Claus carry over his shoulder? Bigger, bigger part of the ship. What does Santa carry <laughs> on his back? Um, a sack of toys. And that's what you've got? Well, a sack of toys. Without the toys? Oh, I'm, I'm afraid I don't understand, sir. Oh, dear. Look, what am I doing now? F firing a gun, sir. That's it. Now, yes. if the gun were you, what would I be doing then? I, I, I don't know, sir. Supposing the gun were called Mr. Humphreys, then what would I be doing? Firing a Mr. Humphreys, you see? You'd be fired. 
Do you mean I'm... I'm fired? Oh, oh no, 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 not, not, not fired, really. No, no, not like a gun. No, you're, you're shot. You mean I'm... You're shot, shot. 20 years of service, I'm, I'm mm. gonna be fired. Yes, you're shot, shot, that's right. Shot, shot up, mm. shot up, promoted. Well done. Oh, oh God. <laughs> well done, Humphreys, old chap. Oh. You may go. Thank you, sir, for the promotion. Right. Bye-bye. <laughs> oh, dear. Sir Charles, I... I just couldn't bring myself to do it. I know, I know, Withers. It just makes this next bit all the more difficult, that's all. What do you mean? Well, Withers, suppose I'm Santa Claus and I'm pointing a gun called Mr. Withers at you. What am I going to do? <laughs> I'm terribly sorry about that. Seems you got some interference from a pirate station. <laughs> you, you are, in actual fact, supposed to be watching Do Not Adjust Your Set. I... God, Stony. Everything's going wrong here today. Thanks very much. Right. Uh, if we could just adjust the camera, perhaps I could make my next announcement. Thank you, friend. Now, <clears throat> it's my turn to be rude about the Bonzo Dog Doodah Band this week. And I have worked out something very rude to say about them. <clears throat> Ready? The Bonzo Dog Doodah Band are not very good. <laughs> Through the twilight I can hear the humming of a melancholy pool. The memories that still linger, I thank you, Mr. Moon. But although I've never smiled since we said our sad goodbyes, now there's one tune to remind me why I feel so blue. Tubers in the moonlight playing for me all night. Tell me what I want to hear. Am I only dreaming? Am I only scheming? Arms about me, squeeze me tightly. Why can't she be sitting here beside me? Tubers in the moonlight will bring my loved one home.
Lovely, I think. Yeah. Uh, well, good luck with the play. Thank I think you. it goes well. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, gentlemen. Uh, good morning. My friend and I are going to a fancy dress ball tonight. Yes. And we'd like to go as the three musketeers. <laughs> but there's only two of you, sir. Oh. oh. <coughs> Would you like to come with us? <laughs> well, it's very kind of you, sir, but um, I'm afraid I wouldn't be able to come without my wife, and that would make four. <laughs> oh. Well, in that case, we'd like to go as the three blind mice. <laughs> well, basically, sir, there's the same objection to that one. There aren't quite enough of you. <laughs> oh. oh. What would you suggest, then? Well, um, how about the two gentlemen of Verona? <laughs> oh, yes, that's a very good idea. Yes, that's very good. <laughs> how many do we need? <laughs> how many what? How many people? Just the two of you, sir. A duet it is, a costume duo for two. The two gentlemen of Verona, you see. Where will we get the other one, then? <laughs> you won't need him, sir. But he's probably been looking forward to it. <laughs> um, <coughs> look, gentlemen, why don't you go as Tweedledum and Tweedledee? You, sir, can go as Tweedledum and you as Tweedledee. What will you be? <laughs> I'm not going, sir. Oh, well, in that case, there's no problem. We can go as the three musketeers after all. No, you can't! Uh, I mean, no, you can't, sir. You have to have three for that, and there are only four of you. Two of you. Now, you've got to have something, sir, for two. Forty-two. Uh, no. For two. For two. For two. For two. For two. For two. <laughs> I've got an idea. Oh, good. Yes. We'd like to go as the... The grand old Duke of York and his 10,000 men. <laughs> well, of course we can do that, sir. That's easy. The grand old Duke of York and his 10,000 men. We had them in last week. <laughs> A new breakthrough in dog food. It's got 23 different ingredients, 14 different kinds of meat, 8 kinds of vitamins, and 4 different kinds of vegetables. And it's got an enriched beef gravy that no dog will be able to resist. I hope you like it, sir. <laughs> Last week, I was strolling on the embankment when suddenly... This is Captain Fantastic speaking. Last week, I successfully lost Mrs. Black in a dustbin. Where would she appear next, I pondered. <laughs> Could she have lost her way? Because I definitely lost mine. <laughs> <laughs> But according to my umbrella, this must be the place. <laughs> there was something fishy going on. Suddenly I detected an almost imperceptible clue. It was her. Aha! It was painfully obvious I had jumped to the wrong conclusion. But just a minute. There could be no mistake this time. Ha 
last I'd worked it out. She wasn't there. <laughs> Where was she? Suddenly I felt somebody was trying to give me a clue. <laughs> there she was. I wasn't going to fall for any more of her tricks. <laughs> Stealthily. And then... <laughs> ah. So, more of her anchor, Panky. <laughs> As she fled, I seized a convenient life belt and charged. <laughs> Only temporarily delayed, I suddenly saw her resorting to her horrible handbag. What help could she be summoning? <laughs> she was escaping once again, and I was powerless. Has Mrs. Black finally eluded Captain Fantastic? Can he catch her before she finally brings her evil plans to fruition? Will I be out of a job after next week's final spine-chilling installment of Captain Fantastic? And now we present another in our series, Musicians at Work. Number two, the Moldy Peacetime Ensemble. Oh, 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 oh,